Snoop, with his laid-back delivery, is one of the most iconic voices in rap. His unique style immediately stood out when Snoop was introduced to the world on Dr. Dre's 1992 landmark album, The Chronic, which helped redefine West Coast hip-hop. Check it out. Y'all definitely got to look out for a Snoop Doggy Dog album because I'm putting a lot of work into this. It's going to be the bomb. It's going to be major. You know mm. what I'm saying? Mm. Now, it was Snoop's turn to take the spotlight with his debut album. It would be a game changer in the rap world. It's the bounce to the wild, creeping and crawling. Yiggy, yes, yo, and Snoop Doggy Dog in the house with the pound like every day. And I'm right back up in you with Dr. Dre. When I work with Dr. Dre on the chronic, I was all over it from the intro to the last song, pouring my heart out on that record, making it the best record I could present for Dr. Dre, writing songs for him as if they were for me. And my reward was Dr. Dre going in the studio with me, doing my whole album, Doggy Style, from top to bottom. Doggy. They heard me on the chronic, but that was Dre's album. So when it's time for my record, it's the same thing, but it's just Dre not going to be all over this. He going to be all up under this. He going to be the sound, and I'm going to be in the forefront. Whatever come to mind, we would do a song about it and make it into something. The records, drum machines, and musicians, and just stirring it all up. We was having good feelings and good times, so the music came out great. We was just doing what we wanted to do, and we didn't really have so much of a business sense as we did a creative sense, and we wanted to be the dopest, and so when it was time to make records, nothing mattered but that. This Microphone, so I can slowly fold you. I told you, most you scold you like some water that's hot. Eat it, beat it, Snoop Dogg. You can't defeat it, delete it. Now I'm so smooth, I don't have to dish you on the camera or the TV screen. I'm funky like some collard green. Dr. Gin and Juice. The weak doggy style dropped, it made history, taking over the charts and going straight to number one. A first for a debut rap release. Its success was fueled by two top 10 singles, Who Am I, What's My Name, and Gin and Juice. Doggy Style also earned Snoop a MTV Video Music Award in 1994 for Best Rap Video. I knew he was gonna do things in life, but I never imagined that he would be doing this. I was like, oh my God, he is really doing it. My son is doing it. With Doggy Style in the chronic, West Coast gangster rap was blowing up, and so were its critics. The media, politicians, and parents were up in arms over its uncompromising, uncensored graphic lyrics. At that time, America was kind of like not happy with Snoop Dogg saying that his lyrics and misogynistic and whatever that word is. On, we don't use that word where I come from. Snoop was an easy target until the moment he found out that one of the most powerful names in music had his back. Dick Clark was like, he was a tycoon when I was a kid. And even when I became an artist, he still was the biggest in the music industry from back in the days to the present time. Dick Clark had been making artists famous from the birth of rock and roll up to the sonic boom of gangster rap. And when the network executives said they didn't want Snoop on the 1994 American Music Awards, Dick Clark fought back and won. It was media saying that, you know, ABC don't want to have Snoop Dogg perform. And um, Dick Clark was like, he was number one. The, the charts don't lie. I'm having him on my show. Just being able to have Dick Clark call you, that was like the definition of you are a superstar. Before I went on at the rehearsal, he came, he was there. He came and shook my hand and met me and told me he loved my music and that made me feel good for Dick Clark to know who I was. For the performance, Snoop got Dr. Dre as his DJ and had his homies cruising around the stage on bikes. Dick Clark came to me at the end of the thing and said, you know what, Snoop Dogg, I love you, and I knew you were going to do the right thing, and that's why I stood up for you. Even with the smash album of his own and mainstream exposure, Snoop still had one foot in gangland, and a scary chapter in his life was about to play out, just like one of the songs on Doggy Style, Murder Was the Case. 
Dakota was the case that they gave me. On August 23, 1993, Snoop was behind the wheel when his bodyguard, Malik Lee, shot and killed a member of a rival gang. Snoop was accused of being an accomplice to murder. I was being prosecuted for murder and someone's life was, was lost and they had persecuted me in the media so tough and talked so bad about me to where it was like I was going to always be labeled this anyway. It would be the worst two and a half years of his life in the moment he seriously began to question whether he had a future if he didn't escape his past. He was stressed out just knowing your life is in a judge's hands. I was there every day because he asked me, Mom, I want you to be there every day because, you know, I'm really weak now and I know that you're strong. Finally, the jury came back with the verdict. Calvin Brodus, not guilty of the crime of murder in the first degree. I don't even think I was in there. I think my soul was somewhere else. If I'd have got found guilty, I, I think I would have died that day. This second chance that I'm given, I need to make the most of it and be more of a positive role model. That's what I've been doing since that day. I've been on a mission to do what's right. Murder, 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 murder. Yeah, murder was the case that they gave me. It's the first time I ever teared up on that song right there. Snoop was ready to distance himself from the gangster lifestyle, but that would mean leaving Death Row Records and his notorious CEO, Suge Knight. And Snoop wasn't the only one who wanted out. So did Dr. Dre. It started going bad midway through the second record on Death Row. You could see Dr. Dre didn't like the surroundings of the environment. Dre moved on, but Snoop stuck around for his friend and Death Row brother, Tupac Shakur. Just gonna shake the whole music scene, guaranteed. By him coming to death row, it's just like Kobe and LeBron finally being able to play together. As Tupac's career heated up, so did the rivalry between the East Coast and West Coast rap scene. While Tupac and the rest of the death row crew were mixing it up with their East Coast rivals like Biggie Smalls and Sean Puffy Combs, Snoop was trying to keep the peace. Snoop and Tupac were real good friends until some of the records Tupac put out like offended Snoop because Tupac was dissing people that was our friends that we hung out with. It was definitely getting rocky. The rivalry threatened to turn violent. Now, hindsight, that's when it all went bad. Got acquitted for the murder case. I didn't feel like glamorizing gangster rap and I felt like that was a part of me and Tupac's relationship going sour. Snoop and Tupac were headed in opposite directions, and their friendship was in trouble. But before they had a chance to make things right, Snoop got a devastating phone call that would change his life in rap music forever. Yeah, that was a horrible call. We was um, at Warren G's house playing video games, and they was like, put it on the news. We put it on the news, and we seen Suge's BMW and the yellow tape around it. Tupac had been shot in Las Vegas. He was like, I'm gonna have to take off to get to Vegas. And he took off. Pac was still alive, so we didn't think it was gonna be the way it ended. We thought he was gonna pull through. I didn't hear from him uh, for a couple of days, but then I called him, you know, called him to see was he cool. And uh, he was just like, man, this is it's not looking good. Tupac died on Friday the 13th in September of 1996. I went to the bathroom, I fainted, I threw up. I just was like, I was gone. Like my whole, because me and my homie wasn't straight. I never got a chance to, you know, tell him, you know, what, what is it? What, how can we fix this? Mm -hmm. We never got that day and that's the way it ended with me and him. Coming up, Snoop Dogg escapes the gangster lifestyle and settles down. I would have been killed because the lifestyle was too fast. Learns the ropes from the master. I thought Tupac was the hardest working man in show business till I met Master P. And finds his singing voice with one of the hottest producers around. We went in and we created a masterpiece. Later, Snoop reveals the moment that changed it all for him. This is Snoop Dogg, The Ride.